I'm Gintare, an urban designer at Posa Max One, the company that works on uh, healthy, sustainable and smart cities. My interest in circularity started uh, already in the childhood. I'm fortunate uh, that I grew up in the family with, um, in the, who is environmentally uh, conscious. We practice sorting waste already way before that was municipal requirement. When you're made actively responsible to take care of your waste, then you realize how much actually you generate. Then I started working and I also wanted to integrate circularity in my projects. But soon I ran into challenges. For example, in public space projects, the common practice is to use materials from uh, Open Bada Ramte Handbook. That's a local policy. And then, uh, unfortunately, circularity uh, or circular alternatives um, are not uh, included. So if that's a bottleneck, let's solve it, I thought. And uh, we started um, a research by design project, helping municipalities uh, to update their policies. The project that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, today is uh, designing uh, vital soil in uh, urban areas. This is a research by design project that resulted in a handbook for designers and policymakers uh, who want to create a healthy soil in the public space uh, projects. This project is circular uh, because we analyzed uh, different flows. We looked at um, water, nutrients and soil flows. We looked at what happens with rainwater, how much uh, of it infiltrates on site, what happens with fallen leaves, and how excavated soil is uh, treated. Then we looked at what healthy soil needs and then how these flows need to be adjusted in order to support it. One of the challenges um, in this project uh, was limited availability of data about the subsurface before we started designing. Uh, we know approximate location of cables and pipes. However, you can only be sure when you open the surface. And it is not uncommon that you would discover old structures, cables left behind. For a long time, we regard it as a void. A void in which we would place foundations, uh, we would hide everything we don't want to see, like parking, uh, waste bins, um, cables and pipes, mobility infrastructure. And as a result, right now it's too crowded. And it's also not a void. It's actually an intricate ecosystem of uh, nematodes, of bacteria, of uh, fungi, of uh, um, uh, abiotic and abiotic factors, um, carbon, water. Um, and it is important to, to support, support everything what is above the ground. When I started this project, one fact really resonated with me that the average lifespan of the tree in some of the cities is only 15 years. We definitely can do better. In this specific project, we took the soil from the very beginning, which can result into multiple design options. And here are a few. Um, the first scenario focus on maximum climate adaptation. Second one on the maximum biodiversity. And the third one on maximum circularity. And here, besides uh, what is common to think about uh, materials and the structures to be reused and recycled, we also uh, thought, what if you would close some of the water, nutrient and soil loops locally, so uh, leave them to be on site, uh, how nature can develop throughout the time itself. And that requires us as designers to leave that space and time for the nature to finish our work. The major lesson I learned is that you cannot create sustainable public space without healthy soil. In order to create conditions for healthy soil, we as designers need to actively take it into consideration its needs from the very beginning of our design process. We need to make this as a common practice. In the circular transition, we as urban designers need to pay attention to certain aspects and certain skills. We need to boost our curiosity in materials. That requires a bit of 
industrial designer's approach at the beginning of the project, to take the material, to look uh, at its characteristics, to think um, how can it be reused in more creative ways out of the box. For that, we also need pilot projects. Projects where we can test unconventional materials and methods and make what is uncommon, common. Thirdly, we need to dispel myths about circularity. One common notion is that inhabitants prefer new materials because of its aesthetics. However, pilot projects in Rotterdam uh, prove the opposite to be true. Therefore, involving inhabitants from the very beginning of the project is a key. And we do that already, we just maybe need to pay more attention to it.